All right, folks, so again, again, we have, of course, uh, the um, uh, the Brett Kavanaugh uh, confirmation hearing that's still going on. We thought this thing was over. We thought it was over. Uh, but the reality is uh, it is not. On Monday, as I said, you're going to have uh, his accuser, uh, Dr. Ford, as well as uh, Brett Kavanaugh, testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee. All eyes will be on them uh, in many ways to just remind us, of course, of the uh, contentious hearings dealing with, with Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas. And it causes folks to have, have to ask the question, uh, had Anita Hill uh, hearings been done differently, had you had women involved, would that have made a difference? And so we're seeing that again, where Republicans are now having to contend with that. Uh, there are many of their supporters who are saying this is a waste of time. It shouldn't even be brought up, whereas you have Democrats who are saying, no, it should be a part of the conversation. And so right now I want to bring up uh, our panel to talk about this here, to get the thoughts and perspective uh, on this and a whole bunch of other issues that we have. Uh, first, on the far, far right of mine, we have Deborah Simmons. She is senior correspondent for The Washington Times. We also have, of course, on our panel, Spencer Overton, president for the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies, and Tiffany Lofton. Uh, she, of course, uh, she is the head of the College and Youth Division of the NAACP. Deborah, I'll start with you. Okay. Uh, should she testify? Woman oh, oh, Brett Kavanaugh. If, if the committee wants her to testify, she should testify, as should Judge Kavanaugh. The thing is, the last thing I saw before I left the newsroom is that she has not agreed to testify yet. Um, which is interesting at a, at a last moment notice like this. But look, the other thing is, is that it doesn't matter how many women are on the Senate panel, how many women are not, whether this was, uh, what age they were, anything like that, sexual assaults and rape are always serious. And I hardly want to throw salt into the wounds of any person who's ever been sexually assaulted or raped. But if you look at the timeline of, the, of events, it does raise a lot of questions. When well, you say the timeline, what do you mean? The timeline of when it reportedly happened. Right. When she reportedly first came first to even let her husband know it had happened and her therapist, the, the uh, couple's therapist, family therapist or what you have, and the rest of her family, when she first handed this information over to somebody who then handed it over to Senator Feinstein. Okay, I'm going to take this out for a second. Go ahead, no problem. And then um, Senator Feinstein decided to hand, it, hand the information over to federal authorities. That's the timeline we're dealing with here. And it doesn't matter what the offense is supposed to be, but in when you're prosecuting a crime, you have to have evidence and not just he said, she oh, said. But this isn't, is the question boxes or briefs. I mean, yeah, but this isn't a crime. The, the, the standard is not beyond a reasonable doubt. The question is, should this person be on the highest court in the land? In terms of the timeline, I don't see anything. But wrong you can't with the answer that question that with a about. no unless you have evidence as to why he or she shouldn't be on she, the bench. She, she is a witness. That is evidence, and it is incumbent no, upon him to respond to that Just saying something evidence. is evidence. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. say they're, they're, I'm not they're, they're, to say I'm not going to employ this person. You know, we, we do oh, not okay. need I DNA. Just to get that clear. We don't need text. We don't need video to lock brothers up for years. We've got to have those things to to come here to say that this person should not be on the U.S. Supreme Court. But not just somebody who said they did something. Well, we've you got her what note I'm saying? from 2012. This is before if, Kavanaugh if is a, even named. She brought this forward before he was if even it, if the bar is here. lower than what a criminal this court isn't, would yeah, look at. That's my a, point. Yeah, this isn't a criminal court. That's my court. point. So it's, why it's are we a much going lower, through this? It's, it's and a of much course, I think bar. she should testify. Tiffany. This is the interesting part. I agree. She should testify. I do hope, to answer your question, that she actually does come and testify on Monday. I think it's super important, not only because of Judge Kavanaugh, but also because when we talk about the Me Too movement, we talk about uh, survivors and victims of sexual assault, it is important that in the culture of America today, we are no longer afraid of being able to put on blast and share the, the, the traumatizing stories that have happened in our communities and to women and to men and to LGBTQ folks identified alike. So yes, she should absolutely testify on Monday. In terms of the actual case, and it was interesting watching this conversation, uh, I, I disagree. Looking at a room full of white men who are going to make the decision for Anita Hill, who made the decision for Anita Hill, and now looking at a group of men who are going to also make that decision, they have already put in doubt 
her story and her testimony. So I think that it is important that we have diversity in these spaces moving forward, with, especially with elections, because this is not a judge, this is not a Supreme Court case, this is not a criminal uh, uh, case that's being taken place. This is a committee meeting to appoint a federal judge. So it's actually really important that we do have diversity of folks that are on that uh, 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 committee because then they can also have different perspectives on how they're going to view it. They have already put in doubt and in jeopardy. And it's interesting to watch the conversation between our communities have this debate. Well, it's too late that she put her letter out or it's perfect timing because they're about to point Judge Kavanaugh or uh, is her story true because she doesn't have evidence. And I think that none of that actually matters at this moment, that if somebody comes out because they have an actual story that they need to tell about a traumatizing sexual assault or possible rape case that happened to them, then we should be able to take that seriously when it happens. Now, if it's false and it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and it was a lie or whatever it was because that's possible, then we'll deal with that in the case. Well, here's but the it's question, a hearing though. right the, the now, not a case. Is, the question, though, is how do we even establish that it's false? How do we establish that it's true? At this moment, we can't. All we can do is wait for her to come and testify on Monday and hope that when she testifies, she shares the story that she actually has, and then the committee is allowed to make the decision right. on Judge Kavanaugh. So, what we're, so, so Spencer and Deborah, what we're left with, it really comes down to who sounds more credible when they testify. Because if you don't have, if you don't have anything, like it's different if this was a situation where after it happened, mm -hmm. she immediately told a friend. Right. Uh, you don't have that. Right. Uh, it's different if it was, it happened and I immediately yeah. called the police right. or it happened at a school. Right. I immediately told a right. teacher, I told right. someone right. at this happened. Mm -hmm. That That's yeah. way different. Yep. So, but, but she did tell her therapist in 2012 about this incident. So it wasn't like she just came up with this. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, this notion that people suppress some of the, the worst thing that's ever happened to them or one of the worst things that ever has ever happened to them, that is no surprise. People are embarrassed of things even mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. they had nothing to do with it, even though they're not at fault at all. So if you're a United States be, Senator, again, right. you're left with, Deborah. again, who do I believe? And so at the end of the day, when Monday comes and if she does agree to testify, what you're going to be left with is, I'm going to listen to her, mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to him, and now i got to decide who do I think, frankly, is more credible. He, he says, she said, from the title of a TV show a long, long time ago, look, you don't, just telling your story is not substantive enough. You have to tell facts. And he has to be given, he being Judge Kavanaugh, the opportunity to, to dispute this fact. If, she, if, if somebody's sitting up there telling a whole bunch of lies about you, how can you okay. wait a minute? Wait a minute. Because no, We're I'm just saying. I'm just, we have to assume everything, but no, because nobody's testified yet before Congress. Right. But if somebody's telling a bunch of lies, how do you negate that? Other than to keep saying that's not right. true, I didn't do that. That's not true, I didn't so, do that. So, so, so let's also just think about this from a motives standpoint, right, uh, okay. Roland? We're not talking about a Stormy Daniels who might benefit from media attention by going. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a PhD professor whose, frankly, credibility is undermined by a variety of people questioning her veracity. She has nothing to benefit here from coming forward. And that's something, and again, I don't want to get into politics of respectability and the stature of different folks and all that other kind of stuff, but I'm just saying that this woman has nothing to benefit from she could coming write a book. forward. Nothing personally to benefit. She could the, write a the book. The last thing that I'll say is, <laughs> and a lot of people have written books, the last thing that I'll say is... And professors have to, to keep to the, their tenure. That's how they get tenure. They, 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 okay. they don't write books on I, being okay. assaulted. Yes, yeah, okay. yes ma'am. Let, okay. let me tell you something. For the last six years, I was a teacher union organizer, uh -huh. so I know a lot about that I education know. field. I know who you so are. So what, what, what happens is, I think that uh, despite whether or not her story is true, false, she testifies on Monday or not, mm -hmm. Judge Kavanaugh is still unqualified in my opinion. So for, for us to have that conversation, but nothing I don't to do want with this to situation. Be, Either or, whether it is Ooh. the situation or not, I think the Judge Kavanaugh should still not be appointed to the, to the federal Supreme Court, period. So, yes, this story may or may not be true, but he's still unqualified to be the Supreme Court justice. All right, well, we'll certainly see what's going to happen on Monday. So we'll be following this over the next few days.